Star Trek, Lower Decks Season 2 Episode 2 Easter Eggs and References Spoilers ahead for Star Trek, Lower Decks Season 2, Episode 2, Cation, His Eyes Open. In the Next Generation episode The Most Toys, Kiva's Fio tried to keep Data forever. The idea that someone thought it was okay to collect was an oddly self-referential concept for Star Trek even in the 1990s. Just like now, the idea of a Star Trek collectible was a thing hardcore Star Trek fans thought about all the time. But, other than the fact that everyone would actually want to collect data, the most toys wasn't actually about Star Trek collectibles. But, the newest Star Trek, Lower Decks episode, kind of is. In Cation, his eyes open, the crew of the Cerritos encounters one of those famous collectors, while the crew of the Titan deal with some very familiar transporter clones. It's almost like this is an episode that is filled with as many Easter eggs on purpose. Here's everything we caught. Beta shift. When Jet joins the lower deckers at the start of the episode, it's implied they are on beta shift. This seems to check out with season 1. In which it was clear that the Cerritos was on a 4 shift duty rotation, which included the night shift known as delta shift. This idea was first introduced in the TNG episode Chain of Command, an episode Lower Decks loves to reference. Sonic Showers Although Sonic Showers are referenced a lot in Star Trek, we've only seen Sonic Showers a few times. The first time was in the motion picture, and since then we've only glimpsed the showers. Star Trek, Lower Decks calls out a divisive franchise trend. As Boimler is embroiled in the more action-packed side of Star Trek on Lower Decks he points out the more divisive directions of the franchise. Warning, the following contains spoilers for Star Trek. Lower Decks Season 2, Episode 2 Cation, His Eyes Open, streaming now on Paramount+. Plus. Star Trek, Lower Decks has always possessed something of a noted sense of self-awareness, poking good-natured fun at well-worn franchise tropes even as the USS Cerritos tackles Starfleet's more tedious tasks. And as Brad Boimler acclimates to roll on the bridge crew of the action-seeking USS Titan, he directly calls out some of the more divisive trends apparent in Star Trek in recent years. In contrast to the Cerritos and its relatively low-stakes missions, Captain Will Riker's Titan is constantly fighting formidable threats to the Federation. From pitched starship battles to squads infiltrating enemy operations on daring undercover missions. As much as Boimler always wanted to serve on an important starship, the emphasis on combat isn't why he signed mm. up for Starfleet. He reminds his crewmates the appeal of Starfleet was its devotion to exploration. Advertising a, a circumflexa 127. Related, Star Trek Lower Decks sends up the original series where does it affect? 
Earlier, the Titan crew ridiculed the Enterprise's mm -hmm. usual activities in the era of the next generation, which mm -hmm. permitted time for art classes and theater. However, Boimler reminds his new colleagues that there's more to life than never-ending battles, complete with plot mm -hmm. twists that shake up how they see reality. And as Captain Rikery Mini sees about the slower, good old days aboard mm -hmm. the Enterprise, Boimler returns mm -hmm. to serve on the Cerritos and its more lightweight, mm -hmm. episodic adventures. Boimler's criticism mm -hmm. is a thinly veiled nod to elements of Star Trek, Discovery that have been met with a mixed reception from longtime fans. Discovery and Star Trek, Picard both feature a story that unfolds over the course of a season. Mm -hmm. Similarly, both series are filled with action sequences, often more graphic and intense than classic Star Trek had been. With his assessment of the jarring transition to the Titan, Boimler is providing a knowing observation at the criticism that has come with the latter generation of Star Trek series with the knowing wink to the audience mm. in the way that Lower Decks has historically done best. Advertising Related, Star Trek, Lower Decks confidently beams back for a charming and silly season 2. The mixed response to the more action-heavy and serialized storytelling prevalent in the latter series was so noted that the upcoming series Star Trek, Strange New Worlds clarified it would provide episodic storytelling to vocal relief of fans online. And while there is certainly a time and place for serialized storytelling, Discovery and Picard have their own laudable merits, Boimler's assessment of the more action-packed counterparts to Lower Decks and his re-examination of why he joined Starfleet stands as a reminder to why longtime Star Trek fans fell in love with the franchise. Reviews Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 Episode 2 Review The Lower Deckers tackles the meaning of going boldly in Starfleet, and creates a perfect, detextual Star Trek episode in the process. This Star Trek, Lower Decks Review contains spoilers for Season 2, Star Trek, Lower Decks Season 2 Episode 2. At this point, asking whether or not Lower Decks is real Star Trek is nuts. Not only does the series capture the warm and fuzzy mm. TNG vibe nearly perfectly, it also talks about the meaning of Star Trek, quite a bit. In the Season 2 debut, Lower Decks examined the old toast trope of a mortal suddenly having godlike powers, and looked at what that meant from at least three different ways, in three different storylines. But this week, Lower Decks is being a bit tricker. If we think of each episode of this series as like a treatise on the nature of a certain Star Trek concept, Cation, his eyes open, was all about competing definitions of what it means to be good at your job in Starfleet. And sometimes, when that happens, you end up meeting your double. Although the introduction of a Tamarian crewmember named Cation hogs the title of the episode, that's a bit misleading. Yes. Cation is from the same alien race as Captain Dathan in the wonderful TNG episode yeah. Darmuk, but in this episode, Cation yeah. isn't really that big of a deal. You could argue that maybe the Tamarian's exclusively analogy-based language is a larger metaphor for Star Trek itself, 
But that doesn't really seem to be what the episode is going for here. Cation is a feature of the episode, but not its subject. Just like Much Ado About Boimler in Season 1 was about many other things other than Boimler, this episode is mostly about Mariner getting called out for being too reckless again, and the story of how Boimler himself makes it back to the Cerritos. While on a mission to help catalog a collector's ship, Mariner, Tendi, Rutherford and Jet, all get trapped by some killer security systems pretty quickly. In Jet, Mariner sees a rival for who will be the dominant cool member of the group, and so, she predictably acts like she's in charge until things go horribly wrong. What makes this work is that Jet is her equal, and is in no way influenced by Mariner's bullshit. But, unlike Captain Ramsey in Season 1, Mariner can connect with Jet by the end of the episode, because she figures out they actually have more in common than they don't. In short, although the show is relying on the gimmick of Mariner screwing something up again by being too arrogant, it totally works because the context is pretty different than last season. But the real brilliance of the episode is all about Boimler's adventures on the USS Titan, and how getting Transporter cloned sends him back to the USS Cerritos. While on an undercover mission with some of the Tian's resident Askickers, Boimler finds himself defending the softer aspects of Next Generation lore. When his Titan shipmates mock the fact that the Enterprise D used to have a regular string quartet, Boimler sticks up for the D, and everything that crew was all about. By the end of the episode, Boimler realizes that the kind of missions that the Titan crew goes on aren't exactly why he signed up to be in Starfleet, and says it out loud. At the end of the episode, when his old buddies on the Cerritos ask him what the Titan was like, Boimler says, it was a bunch of complex characters thrown into heavily serialized battles, which always ended in mind-blowing twist which made me question the basic tenets of my reality. On some level, you could take this as Lower Decks poking fun at the season-long plot structures of its sister shows Discovery or Picard. The missions of the Cerritos are closer in feeling to what happened on the Enterprise-D than anything happening on the newer shows. Those strange new worlds might be a throwback, too. The point is, Lower Decks continues to give voice to old-school Star Trek, which, in this case, means 1990s Trek. At the end of the episode, Boimler's Titan friends call him Enterprise, in a kind of teasing, friendly way. Boimler fits into a different era of Starfleet, maybe one before the Dominion War happened, and certainly not the Starfleet we saw in Picard Season 1. But, what Lower Decks is saying with this episode is that maybe all versions of Starfleet can exist alongside each other. Yes. Sometimes Starfleet is all covert ops and phasering, like in the movie Into Darkness, or like half of DS9. But maybe, sometimes, things are more like the goofy TNG episode Second Chances, in which Riker was infamously duplicated. Toward the end episode, when it's revealed there are now two Boimlers, one of the Boimlers says wait, I'm the transporter clone, boo. But, the bigger message here is much smarter. They are both the real Boimler. Both versions of Starfleet can coexist. And, it turns out, Boimler can want to be part of both crews. Each one is the genuine Boimler, proving that the definition of going boldly can mean different things even within the same person. Top articles about Conatics v 126868 Read more Annette, the Sparks Brothers break down their surreal Adam Driver musical, Den of Geek. Written by Ryan Britt. Ryan Britt is a longtime contributor to Den of Geek. He is the... <laughs>
No.
Bye.